All right, so I'm going to do an installation of the Dream PSU. Uh, these are the six pieces that you will get in the unassembled kit. And, of course, they will be uh, solderless and drop in if you order it fully assembled. And, of course, I picked the dirtiest Dreamcast that I had. And it is a Rev Zero. So to start with taking the modem off. To access the screw under here, and then you have three more. I pointed out what rev it was. This is a zero. Um, it'll work on all revs, all known Dreamcasts. The Dream PSU will work in it. And this is about as far down as you actually need to take it to do this because we're just replacing the actual power supply. So there's two screws. You can unclip your power switch lead right there. And then here are the two screws. We will e reuse one of those screws. I like to pick it up from the AC input and unclip it. That will give you some leverage. You can actually hold the heat sink right here and kind of work it up off of the pins. Um, I've seen people leave the plastic piece in and then just move this on top, but you can leave it out since uh, this will not be touching. It's actually going to rest on this post right here, like so. Matter of fact, yeah, the plastic piece won't be protecting anything anymore. So, that's as far as you need to take it to install the kit. However, I do recommend doing a bunch of the other mods, resettable fuse and fan mod, etc. If you if you want to. So, as far as assembling this. There's not much to it. Uh, your 3D printed piece, I would suggest putting that on before you do much of anything because if you solder those wires on there to both the, the DC jack and the motherboard, you won't be able to get this on there. And it's fairly obvious the textured side will face out. And that fits nice and flush in there like that. And reinstall the nut on the back. Because it's flush, there's not much to hold on to, but you don't really need it to be crazy tight. Um, I tried to get it to where the nut is even with the 3D printed plastic just so you don't have one of the corners sticking straight up. And then we will solder that on there. And this can be somewhat based on the polarity of your AC adapter. Uh, you can buy center negative or center positive. It doesn't really matter, but it will change the way you solder this up. So if you take your multimeter and double check it. You'll see the long one here. The long solder tab on the back. Is the outside. And the short is the pin. Which would be your center. So most of the time you'll get a uh, center positive AC adapter and if, if you're buying the fully assembled it will be wired for center positive and I like to obviously keep the red positive and the black negative so 
I will actually wire the long will be black and the red will be short since it's center positive. These are the wire strippers I like to use. Makes it very easy, but you're more than welcome to use a knife or whatever you normally use. I do like to add some flux. This is rosin flux. And I am using a, a no clean core solder. And yes, I still need a fume extractor. So I try to get the gauge of the wire to match the holes in the solder lugs but with solder on it often it will not fit and usually it's the very ends they're too big yeah that's definitely not gonna push in there with any kind of ease you can try keeping it hot and pushing it through, but one thing I like to do is to just, just get it soldered on there. It doesn't have to go through that hole. So remember the short one was a center, so if we're going for center positive, going for something like that. Never hurts to apply more flux. might need to separate the red from the black a little bit here Now let's see, let's solder on our connectors. The silk screen kind of shows you the layout. And uh, don't complain to me about PCB design layout because I didn't change anything other than I added sold by Game Tech US on there. It's a little bit difficult to solder it upside down. Layer down and start one. Try not to move it. Let it solidify and then you can hit the other ones. I would definitely change this so it had more meat on the annular ring on the PCB. That's something I always struggled with in the beginning and always remember it and a lot of the footprints that you use right off of your CAD software don't have very big angular rings and let's see then the top left two are the power switch and I believe we 
or, yeah, that silk screen is missing as well, but I believe the clip end goes inward like that. If you look at your Dreamcast, the way that it's curled, it wants to be towards the pins like so. And it's just, and it does not matter actually. It's just the orientation of the those leads that matters because it's this just goes to the switch so it just um, opens or closes these two pins so it doesn't matter if it's soldered on like this is what I'm trying to say. And those are very big thick pins so don't be afraid to leave your soldering iron there for a couple more seconds than you normally would get that solder to flow to the top side etc and these two holes were meant for another connector but I don't really like using connectors especially in these situations where it just it's gonna be installed and then it's just gonna be there forever you don't need to disconnect it, you know, probably never again. And it looks like once again my wires are way too thick, even though that hole is larger. A whole bunch of solder on there. There we go. So I seen this and I was like, well, let's just leave that connector off. Let's see if we can solder right to those pads, and sure enough, you can. It's super easy. Don't be shy with your solder, glob it on there. If you want, you can. Come to your bottom side with your flush cutters. Clean it up a little bit if you want. And I use no clean, it still looks like there's some flux on there. And if you want to clean it off, now's the time to do it. Uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how easy it is. This is the piece that you will get if you order it fully assembled. So it literally just falls into place. You can push it down onto the pins. If you want you can put uh, one of your screws back in. Double it. Like so. And then the 3D printed piece just slides onto the back. Power switch clicks into place. That's it. Put your top back on and start using it. And obviously, we recommend using a 12 volt 4 amp. Uh, I believe it's just a normal 5.5 by 2.5, maybe 2.1 DC jack. Super, super easy.